G'day, 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 g'day. This is Nick from stridewise.com with my usual number of g'days. That's a normal way I start my videos. I am a New York based internet person, but I am from Australia and I'm delighted to have an excuse to post perhaps my most Australian video yet, with the possible exception of my kangaroo boots up there somewhere. We're talking about Australia's most beloved export. Uh, nope, not him. I'm talking about Chelsea boots. Actually, we're, we're kind of talking about Hugh Jackman, given that he owned 5% of this company when it sold to an Australian mining magnate in 2020, which helped Wolverine pocket like some $10 million from the deal. We're talking about Iron Williams and Blundstone, the two most iconic Chelsea boots on earth, I would say, with an obvious bias. But if you're looking for either the most beloved Chelsea or the most popular Chelsea, you are going to wind up looking at these two companies. So we're gonna be comparing them today. They're both laceless boots, they're both Australian, they're both almost synonymous with the word Chelsea boot, and they're about as different as two boots can be. Don't be fooled by their country of provenance and their laceless style, especially for the Blundstones actually, which are not actually, we'll, just, we'll jump to the differences. Here we go. These are the differences between Iron Williams and Blundstones. First is, the price. I was gonna say where they're from, but I'll go with the price and then everything else will follow from that. Iron Williams are way more expensive. After a price jump in mid 2022, the archetypal Iron Boot, the Comfort Craftsman, went from a bit under 500 bucks to 539 USD for a pair. If you're an Australian, a similar jump occurred in Australian dollars. Meaning if you're an American visiting Australia, you should get them there because the conversion makes them like almost 200 bucks cheaper. But Iron Williams, significantly more expensive. Meanwhile, this Blundstone 585, which is actually more popular than the 500 and the 550, uh, this is $220. Uh, the 550 also costs 220, the 500 is 210 because the 550 and the 585 have a better shock absorption system. Uh, there's also more strategically placed foam. They also leather line for extra comfort. So in general, the 550 and the 585, which is in the same line of boots, uh, these are more comfortable, the 585 and 550 versus the 500. So why such a dramatic difference in price? Well, for starters, the RMs are made in the highly developed nation of Australia with a whopping minimum wage of $21.38. The Blundstones are made in, deep breath, Vietnam, India, China, Mexico, and Thailand. They're not super forthcoming about where each model is made. I have been told off the record that these are made in either Thailand or Vietnam. Now, they're both privately owned companies based in Australia, and I guess companies can make boots wherever they want, but my biggest gripe with the Blundstones of all of my gripes is how loudly and proudly they put Tasmania Australia on boots that are not made in Tasmania Australia. This is just where the orders are given to have them made in Asia, right? Uh, I guess all that doesn't fit too easily on a pool tab, but the, thumbs down for this kind of truth muddling that they've got going on on the literal product itself. But let's get going, we'll talk about the leather here. Let's address the upper before looking at the construction. So we're gonna the leather here. A big thing with Iron Williams is that they are one whole piece of leather, whereas the Blundstones are like either three or four, it's a bit hard to tell. It is very rare to find boots with one piece of leather, which I call hole cut, because it's a lot more expensive, right? It's hard to carve out that much leather from a hide. It means you can't use like bits and pieces of scrap and so on. Is there a benefit to hole cut? Uh, well, yeah, besides the fact that it just like looks a lot cleaner here, there's just one seam running down the back, uh, it looks more elegant as well. It does make for a tougher boot because fewer seams, it means there are fewer places for it to break. And most consider it more comfortable as well with fewer seams to like irritate the feet. Most guys won't be irritated by seams to be fair, but whole cut boots are more comfortable because it being one big piece of leather means it's not restricted by stitching and vamps when it's conforming to the shape of your feet. Iron Williams really do feel like a comfy pair of socks in a way that the Blundstones do not. And this is also because the leather is, is just better on the RMs. Iron Williams is unusual for their usage of yearling leather, which means the cow is killed on his first birthday. This means it's not quite calf skin and not quite cow hide. It has the benefits of both the suppleness and the toughness. So it, it really looks great, it holds up to the elements very well, while creasing quite finely like calfskin and not having as much grain as cowhide. So we'll talk about the construction now. This is the last part of the video. We're gonna focus on maybe the most important element, which is the construction of the sole and the way it is attached to the upper. Blundstones do have some advantages here. Namely, there's a bunch of tech in here to absorb shock. They call it XRD, a lightweight cushioning material that's in the heel and the footbed. And the footbed is also removable, which is handy if you need like orthotic inserts or something like that, right? 
The Iron Williams has more traditional construction. It's got a hard rubber outsole, uh, unless you're getting like uh, one of the models with a leather outsole, like the original Craftsman. But after the outsole and all the models, you've got a layer of cork and then a leather insole. And that combination of cork and leather in the construction helps it to mold to the shape of your foot over time and make them feel um, kind of like custom footwear made for you. As time goes on and your foot kind of sinks into it and leaves its own footprint. The heel on the Craftsman is stacked leather, like an old fashioned boot. There's a composite material in there to help with shock as well. But the Blundstones are definitely better at shock absorption. Perhaps most importantly is that the Blundstone is cemented and the RM is Goodyear welted. What that means is that the Blundstone's top is basically glued to its bottom, whereas the RM's construction is much more complex and water resistant and it can be resold while the Blundstone cannot. That is like maybe the most significant difference between the two. Once you wear through the Blundstone soles, the shoe is done for. Well, you can resole an Iron Williams an infinite number of times and have the boots for decades, which everyone knows an Australian who does have the same pair of RMs for many, many, many years, if not many decades. So, which is the better boot? I will concede the Blundstone has better shock absorption and it's cheaper. For many, those are the defining traits, but the Iron William is cheaper in the long run because you'll own them for longer and you won't have to replace them with another pair of $200 boots after a few years. So on a per wear basis, assuming you won't want to throw out your boots for any other reason, then they've become unwearable, the Iron Williams are a vastly better purchase. They're more comfortable on the foot from the whole cut leather. They'll age better. The leather is just higher quality as well. They can be resold and they, they just look better. They have a much more refined last and you can be confident that the guys making them in the state of South Australia are making a comfortable living. That's it. That's my comparison, man. That's the comparison of Blundstones versus Iron William. Oh, hey, look, I've been Watching this video of the uh, of the Blundstones and Iron Williams, I think I've been a little bit mean to the Blundstones, right? I'm being a bit of a boot snob, and I thought I had to, I had to film this just real quickly to say, Blundstones are like three hundred dollars cheaper, and they absorb shock better, and they're more casual. I don't think you can wear a hoodie uh, with Iron Williams. They're, they're just they're too sleek and 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 nice. This weird zigzag thing that's on most of them, it's weird. Uh, hard to resole, sure. Uh, but yeah, look, the nice round toe makes them very, very casual. Uh, they absorb shock better. They don't fit the foot quite as nicely as Iron Williams and also all the other stuff I said about Iron Williams. Uh, but they are $300 cheaper. So I don't wanna be that snobbish and say that everyone should shell out for 500 and whatever dollar boots if you just can't afford them. Uh, that said, uh, you will get more longevity out of a welted boot, yes, but the shape is, is more casual and lends itself to more casual situations and better truck absorption. Long-term comfort, better for Iron Williams, but I, I don't wanna be that mean to Blundstones. Blundstones are still perfectly good if, you know, if you like look at this boot.